Ojalá el producto, ¿verdad? Parece que va a ser como la plaga que le pegó a los Ramírez el año pasado. There you see it, a clip from Dos Estaciones. This is a time of year when we celebrate the wonderful movies that come out of Latin America, Spain, Portugal. The 38th annual, annual Chicago Latino Film Festival is about to kick off. And joining us to guide us through some of the best, Alejandro Riera. Uh, he's going to talk about some of these movies that we'll see again. I think it's over 100 movies, right, it's Alejandro? It's close to 100 this close year. Close to, to 100. 100. Yep. So, and all of them are remarkable. I feel like every time I watch one of these, they're, I'm, I'm just so amazed by the wonderful work that so many of our folks do. Um, let's talk about some of the ones that we'll see. And what's different this year? Because you're coming off of this pandemic, right? We're coming off the pandemic. Well, we're going back to the theater. Okay, That's, good. The, big That's the big thing. That's the big thing. We're going back to the theater even though we're still taking baby steps. I mean, instead of the five, four mm -hmm. to five screenings at, say, the AMC River East, we're only doing two screens at the Landmark Century Center. Part of it is because we still know, even though people say, no, we're not, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. Right. And, you know, one of the communities that's been most affected by the pandemic is the Latino community. So it makes sense for us to embrace the theatrical mm -hmm. experience again, because that's where we belong, but also do it carefully, conscientiously, you know, taking into consideration the fact that people may still not be comfortable about going to a movie theater into an enclosed place, which is one of the many reasons why we kept the virtual portion of the show. I mean, virtual has become a very important and satisfactory tool for film yeah. festivals like ours. Yeah, part of so many industries, right? It's mm -hmm. become so important in so many industries. But I do think it's a good point that we need to get back to yeah. sort of our everyday lives. And going to the movies and enjoying mm -hmm. that time out is one of them. Um, we're going to talk about The Last Tour, which is one oh. of the movies. Oh. Where is that from, The Last Tour? That's from tour. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, okay. All right, okay. so maybe your mom. got a clip, too. Oh, let's talk about no, that. No, go ahead. <laughs> Um, so oh, as, we talk, as we see this clip, tell me about oh, the movie. Absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah. Hey, I was going to say, this is one movie. You were we were talking earlier before the, we, we started rolling yeah. that you wanted to take your mom to one of these. Yeah. This take is one she will like. This, Porque, is, why? this is the fictional account of Daniel Santos' last tour. Now, if okay. you are an old school bolero listener, you know who uh, Daniel Santos yes. was. He recorded over 400 songs. He was very popular in the 40s and 50s. He performed alongside the Pedro Colo Flores Quartet, the Sonora Matancera. He built this persona around him of being this uber bohemian who will seduce every single woman that he ran into across his Whoa. many trips to Latin America and who get embroiled in as many barroom brawls as possible. So the t film is a wonderful and very remarkable, well done film about that, you know, fictionalizes a little bit about what happened when he decided to make this one last comeback tour. Uh, the time the film starts, he's in Ocala, he's a grocery store owner and he's trying to make this, this brief comeback. And it's a wonderful performance from Hector Rivera. Well Well done film. I, it's one of my favorites. And I know, you know, if you take your mom, she's bound to she's recognize. Gonna, I'm going to score points, huh? Yeah, if I you, take her to you that will. Like, she's bound to recognize <laughs> at least, you know, she'll be able to recognize a good chunk of the okay. songs performed there. And now, is this one of the movies that we can see at the theater? At we the don't, theater okay. and virtually as well, yeah. Okay. So here's the thing about, you know, we're back at the theater, but I will say about 90% of the films that we're showing at the drive in, at the Instituto Cervantes, and at the Landmark Century Center will be made available virtually to residents of Illinois, uh, Minnesota. Wisconsin, Indiana, mm -hmm. Michigan, and Iowa. Okay. That's good to know. That's, That's a yeah. long list. So if you missed, if you, you know, if for some weird reason you can't make it to one of our showings at the Landmark Sanctuary you Center, got options, you yeah. got options. You can still watch it at home uh, virtually okay. uh, during the festival. Okay. Next up, I believe we've got La Guerra Civil, the Civil War. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, this is a really, we came, we got this straight out of Sundance. Uh, this is Eva Longoria's feature filmmaking debut. This is the story of the rivalry between Julio Cesar Chavez and Oscar de la Hoya. You know, a rivalry that we all lived through in the 90s. Yeah. We all covered in the 90s. But it's also a film about the culture shock and the culture clash that many Latin American communities face when they're dealing with the second and third and fourth generation of their sons and daughters via via their own national heroes. So this whole issue about identity, about Mexicans not acknowledging Mexican-Americans as part of their culture and vice versa, the fact that many Mexican nationals identify with Julio Cesar Chavez here in the United States, whereas many Mexican-Americans, obviously, their hero was Oscar de la Hoya. So the documentary talks through the experience of these two men and has tons of interviews with both about that rivalry between the two men and a rivalry that transcended the boxing ring. It had more to do with identity. Okay. You, 
you mentioned Eva Longoria, that this is one of her pro Is she, Kisa does she narrate the movie no, or anything actually, like that? Actually, she just directs it. She just directs it. Okay. But it's like, it's, it, for me, it's interesting that she decided to make her feature yeah. filmmaking debut looking at this, this particular chapter in Latino history and looking at it, looking at this rivalry precisely from that perspective. Yeah. Uh, I, it's get, I think it's going to get some limited theatrical release after its festival run, and I f believe it may air on television by the end of the year. But, you know, this is your chance to catch it with a good <laughs> public, and I suspect we'll have a packed crowd for this one. Okay, good, good. Plaza Catedral is at, the next one. Where's that from? That's from Panama. That's Panama. our opening mm -hmm. night film at the drive-in. The only time you'll be able to see the film at the drive-in. This one won't be available virtually, so you better get your tickets. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, from Abner Benaim. Abner Benaim is right now for Panama, what uh, directors like Jairo Bustamante's Forum Guatemala, uh, pretty much people who are carrying the weight of their film industry on their shoulders. Uh, this is the third film of Abner's that was chosen by Panama to represent them at the Oscars this year. Uh, this is the story that, of a woman who's still dealing with the loss of her child a woman from the high spheres of society, Mexican expat in Panama, who befriends this young Afro-Panamanian kid who is involved in, you know, illicit affairs, and the relationship that builds between them and how that relationship is used to explore issues of class, issues of racism, uh, social and economic differences. Uh, ben Benayim has come out pretty much as the only, you know, pretty much the leader of Panamanian mm -hmm. cinema. As I said before, he's carrying the weight of the entire Panamanian film industry on his shoulders. Uh, he, we had one of his films before Invasion, which was a reenactment of the American invasion of Panama during the uh, Manuel Noriega regime. And then he did a documentary, wonderful documentary called Ruben Blades, It's Not My Name, Ruben Blades, uh, yeah. a couple of years ago. Great documentary in Ruben Blades. So, you know, he's Central American cinema is coming out of its own. You know, it's not only Guatemala and Panama that are developing their own film community, I won't say industry, but the film community, the film activity, but you mm -hmm. have countries like Costa Rica, who have in the last few years sent out a significant number of films that have met with good reviews and good critiques and the festival circuit. Pura Vida. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, all right, you mentioned opening night. So yeah. you guys are having sort of your traditional opening well, night event? How is that going to work? Not really. We're going to do the, you know, the driving works so well for us still. And because it's still in that space where we are not feeling confident yet about having mm -hmm. big events with a big crowd and enclosed space with foots and what have you. But also because the drive-in work well, we're doing our opening, closing night uh, presentations, our centerpiece presentation, and a late night screening of a horror film at the Chi Town uh, Movies in Pilsen. Uh, we've embraced the drive-in. It was successful. It was fun. It. it is yeah. really fun. So I do think that moving forward, we'll see uh, you know, future editions of the festival embracing these three different uh, platforms, these three different yeah. ways to approach movies of traditional theatrical. Well, come on, let's be honest. Drive-in is traditional, except that nobody yeah. did much drive-in until the pandemic hit us. Uh, I mean, thanks to the pandemic, it's made a comeback. But, you know, I, you'll see us, and I think other festivals as well throughout yeah. the country, still working with three, three different entry points and into all movies. they're a lot of fun. They're and all they're a lot, lot of fun. fun. Okay, so it starts the Chicago Latino Film Festival. Give us the dates again and how people can go about getting tickets as we wrap we it up. We start April 21st. April 21st. We close on May 1st. Even though our closing night screenings are on Saturday, April 30th, we'll still have one day of screenings at May, uh, the Sam Tree Center on May 1st. And for more information, Chicago, uh, excuse me, Chicago Latino Film Festival that O-R-G. Dot or that org. org. Chicago Latino Film Festival org for more information on tickets, on movies, all that good stuff. All right. Thank you so much, Alejandro. Sure. Thanks for having us again. All right.